A warm welcome to all of you. The mics are on the table. I would like you to introduce to the audience, please. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Suresh, and I'm the purchasing manager for Bunny Entry. And I'm here for the past eight years in Qatar. Uh, I've worked in Moving Big as well as for the Intercom. And prior to that, I was in Dubai for eight years. And I started my journey in Seychelles for two years in a resort. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Ajit Chaito. I'm present in Winter. I work as a purchasing manager. My experience is 26 years in the industry, especially early in procurement. I was working all my life at those islands, like tropical islands, like Seychelles, Mauritius, Maldives, Sansibar, basically on pre offerings It's my first pre offering in Qatar. So I joined four years back in Wyndham as a pre offering purchasing manager. Still continuing with the same. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, very good morning to you. I'm Narsim Raj. I'm from Team Westing. I have been in the hospitality industry for the last 26 years in cost controlling, procurement, etc. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kumar and Silva. I'm the director of purchasing in Monday and Doha. Uh, I'm in this uh, family field more than 22 years. Uh, with the procurement, I'm um, last 12 years. I uh, start from Saudi Arabia, then I moved here. With this uh, last property, uh, the current property, Monday and Doha, I'm um, from 2016, uh, from the pre opening. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. Um, myself, Rakesh Kumar. I'm um, working as a cluster purchase manager for the minor hotel group for the Sukha Kiputi Hotel and Anand Jata Hotel. I have a total more than 10 years experience in procurement and uh, almost 6 years in the Qatar. I started my journey in Qatar with the Banana Island and after that I moved to the Sukha Kif and Najata. And prior I was working as a procurement in the Lalit Hotel New Delhi. Morning all, my <coughs> name is Anish Tau. Uh, in the hospital industry, I have been for 24 years, uh, 14 years in Qatar now, uh, in W pre opening team since I am here for 14 years now. Thank you. Thank you very much for all of you. A warm welcome to all of you. As we all know that we are here to discuss about the prospects and the challenges for the procurement in the hospital industry. So, are we excited to go? Yes. So, let's begin. I will come back to the audience also after the air, before ending of this session, to come and ask any of the questions related to the procurement about the hospital industry. So, are we excited to go? Let's start. My first question from Mr. <laughs> Kumar. <laughs> How excited we are about Qatar is hosting the FIFA? I mean, for myself, I'm very excited. Telling you the truth, we've been waiting this event, I think, last 10 years. I was here 2013 when the infrastructure structure started in the Qatar, and right now they are well set and all the grounds are open. So by the procurement side, yes, we are very well organized and we do all our wish list and everything ready uh, because the event is going to be big, huge and uh, more exciting. So we are well set. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Narsing, would you like to add something? Yes, of course. Uh, seeing the FIFA coming to the Qatar, we see a lot of opportunities, whole globe coming down to Qatar and I also see not only the visitors who are coming to the Qatar for the World Cup, but I also see investors coming to Qatar. There are doors opening, there are a lot of uh, 
there will be many opportunities for the visitors and also for the hotels with the best products coming in. That's what I look into this. Thank you. Yes. If you ask me, I'm excited. I'm really excited. But this is in my life. It's the second time to be part of the hosting country for the World Cup. I was there in South Africa when 2010 World Cup was happening. So I was one of the task force leader over there. I know exactly what was happening there. But I had seen a better situations right now. That means in January itself, we had all known that situations in Qatar. But in South Africa, we were doing these last minute exercises in 2010. And that was in happened in July 2010, actually. So we hope we will have a better, better arrangements this year. Here. I think it will be here, actually, better arrangements. I'm sure on it. Thank you. Uh, for, for my side, uh, we have seen for the past four years, we have seen that uh, the development of the infrastructure is gradually up and the roads being widened and we can see that there's an excitement among the uh, visitors as well as people uh, and uh, they are inquiring about how, where to stay, how, what are the outlets and uh, I'm sure that uh, this will be a uh, path, path breaking moment for Qatar since uh, a lot of events will happen post uh, FIFA World Cup. Thank you. Um, as per my point of view, I can say that we are ex expecting the great year for 2022 because of the FIFA, for not due to the business but also for the richness of the Qatar culture for the Qatar. And I can say that our Operation Excellence of Qatar Tourism has done a very great job and they, are, they have planned very well as we know that we have a world-class hospitality service, public transportation and a world-class stadium what we have for the coming events and I am very proud to be a part of the FIFA host nation. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> The FIFA excitement is around the world. The, the small country like Qatar, okay, there is a lot of opportunities are coming in and people are very excited to be part of the FIFA. And it's a good experience to come in as a mega event. And I'm happy that to be a part of the FIFA World Cup. I just uh, want to say on this question, I do agree what you all guys have mentioned about the FIFA. Not only us, the whole world is excited about the FIFA in Qatar. And I am sure that yes, it will be one of the greatest events in the history of Qatar. And don't forget that yes, it will be a challenging for all of us. We need to prove ourselves and how to overcome those challenges. challenges are in everybody's life, okay? And you have to do the uh, innovative ideas to come across. The, the main is here is this, the World Cup is like a team, okay? We need support of manufacturer, we need the support of the partners, we need the support of the suppliers. We play all a one goal, you know, it's a team. So the solution need to be fixed in any any event. We we need to we need to grab the opportunity, the resources wherever is available. Let's move on for the next question. As Mr. Ali you have mentioned that you have an experience of twenty five years in the software industry and you are the Senior, one of the senior person among us. I would like to, you must have seen tremendous changes in the Qatar, basically, in the positive side. I would like to know how do you see that Qatar has eased in the last five years in terms of procurement, in terms of the market, in terms of the investment, in terms of cost. Uh, when I arrived here in 2008 from Dubai, 
I mean, it was a, like a very small area. You don't know where to get what. Everything you need to get from Dubai. But last five years, the big changes has happened is, you know, there are a lot of industries open. There are a lot of assistance our government or stakeholders are providing. Uh, everybody knows that house Baladna, you know. So th there, there is a support came immediately. Action plan has been done. There are a lot of industries started opening over here. There are a lot of uh, opportunity for the manufacturer to open the open the you know company over here and uh, support this. As you see, before we were not getting the a uh, small uh, tissue, and now you see the uh, the industry is already here. And before we used to bring everything from out. Since last this five years, we have a lot of infrastructure is done, and. It's e easy for the people to serve here. Very good example of the tissue. <laughs> Five years or eight years before, we have to look the face of our neighbor countries for the small things like tissue. Right now, what we feel, yes, there is a tremendous changes in the market. And uh, we are not totally dependent on our neighbor countries. We are self-dependent. For small, small things. Mr. Raki, if you want to add something, please. Yeah. Um, as Mr. Shani said about the tissue issue, I seem like uh, before five years when I came, uh, that time I observed that everything, uh, even the fruits, vegetables and all, everything was, we were depending on the neighbor countries. But now we can say probably that Qatar has worked very well on the infrastructure and now there are many farming, uh, local farmings for the vegetables and all, which in impact the price of the um, our Pokemon as well. Like I can give the example like Agrico, Majati for the poultry, this Alwaha agriculture for the vegetables, which is locally available in Qatar, and it gives the boost up to the Qatar economy, and it is is us to source the locally, not depending on the other countries. Mr. Narsingh, I, mean. I believe the government has supported the investors very strongly and uh, we see the change. There are, there is Palatna, there are new companies starting for the paper manufacturing, there are new companies starting for the poultry farms, everything. So this all impact came with connected to only one mega event that is FIFA. And also there they were some uh, requirements which all hospital industry wanted. And this made us uh, self-reliance. The government of Qatar putting uh, in front, supporting the investors to open new uh, companies so that they can in turn help us all, uh, help, uh, help all the hotel industry and also the market, uh, the end users. This is what I feel. Good. Mr. In, in, our, in front of us, there is another company known as Qatar Form. Actually, it's a local company actually. They make restaurant mattresses out. Most of the hotels started using restaurant mattresses instead of bringing King Coil from US, which is waiting for like 10 months to get a mattress over here. Right now we can have our own mattress. It's based, it's a brand restaurant. Am I right? So it's, there are a lot of possibilities. Even initially we used to bring cut vegetables from Dubai, from our neighboring country. Now we have cut vegetables, even cut reduces. So we have, I mean like, there are a lot of changes has been happened. And the meat cuts has been, there are a lot of meat cuts has been started coming into the market. So it's all based on this World Cup, we hope so. We, we, we wanted to continue after the World Cup too. That's what, that's what exactly we wanted actually. Because procurement become very easier now nowadays. Now we need to get some spare parts as a task for us. The restaurant is getting very, very closer and easier to us. We hope this will continue more. Thank you. There is always some limitations in the market. You cannot get everything, but yes. What you, Mr. Anis has mentioned, what you have mentioned, like the local brands, what we have in the market. Yes, it is a big changer, game changer, we can call them. For the next five years, 
we feel yes qatar will be having all all small small things by their own is it mr piyush what i suggest to you we should always protect and support the local factories instead of going for a neighboring country fact i know this there won't be much differences especially on the middle east products they make each other so always we should have a factory deal with our local supplier we should support them then only they can come up otherwise they will cross after the world cup and go and we will be back to the normal we have to depend upon the others is really some uh, price difference or the cost price differences are there, there are certain uh, the, 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 the by product what they bring it there some logistic price concerns are there but it's only very nominal very nominal when you see all the strains your taxations you come you pay vat in dubai you pay import by road so all these things we can avoid it and try to support the local people who are really really their product if you see some factories right now coming up so world class standards they have i had recently visited a cut vegetable factory it's amazing you cannot even imagine they are just like dubai barakat vegetables you having the cut vegetable they will be in the market with right now around by 26 juices they are coming up with juices fresh juices there are a lot, there are a lot of activities happening so we should all as a purchasing team as a procurement team we should all support them to come up close thank you uh, so further i would like to add two points uh, as i told you that uh, new doors opening new investors coming for sure after the world cup there will be new investors coming not only the made in qatar products but also the big brands the government is i strongly believe that the government is opening doors for the big brands to open their manufacturing units here in qatar i i strongly believe it will happen i believe this yeah i i agree with all of my colleague i mean qatar has come a long way in last 5 years and we have many things now available local where we can easily find peers over to you thank you just to sum up my opinion is each and every industry or the department or any organization we always have some mantra which we call the principles for the procurement i must say we must have a mantra be global by local what we need from a business partners we want the quality we want the best prices we want the options to choose from and if we get it all these things locally i do i do say nothing can be much better than that so this is the one of the best thing we want it locally we can say again i should say be global by local we should emphasize all those small small industries local industries either it is agro farm or as you mentioned qatar foam air palada any of the tissue supplies to get the best service available locally now let's move into the next question i would like to know from all of you as fifa is approaching what is our to do list and how much we are ready for it when it comes for when it comes to the procurement we always say we always have a last minute request from the departments so we must have done some preparation to avoid all those last minute requests what is your opinion mr kumar what is your to do list in terms of the preparation for the fifa from now so at least you have a plenty of time to work on it yeah uh, to tell you because we only know that this thing is coming so i have spoken to my all department heads that get me their wish list what they want for the fifa because there are big lead time these days uh, as you all know because of the covid we have to wait not the previous time now so everybody asking more than time frame so i have taken all the wish list and already these days in finalizing stage because i have to give their uh, the orders so most of my things are 
finalists right now, especially OS Sydney if, for the FIFA event. As we are expecting around 2.5 million of the visitors in the coming six months. So do we think our preparation and every, all these exercise, whatever we have done in the past is, that means uh, is uh, enough for those FIFA preparation, Mr. Nursing? I believe in the industry, we have a uh, straight uh, process. Predict, plan, action. So in the same way, what we have, we have to run with it. What we have to do, we have to plan and action it. That's what I believe. And uh, even for the upcoming FIFA, the plan of action is to predict what will be the, the clientele, the type of clientele we are getting, and what kind of offerings will we give to them. Because this is the time when we showcase the best in us the best of hospitality because after this this will be there will be a competition between our families that is hospitality industry saying that who, who has done the best because the guest or the clientele who is coming to this country will not forget the yes. the way they have been taken care of and the way they have been treated the the way the how they were taken care of and what was the value for money we have offered for them this will be remembered so Predict, plan, and action. That is what I believe in. Perfect. Mr. Suresh? Huh? Uh, I just want to add uh, that we should have, we always should have the very good uh, relationship with our vendors, suppliers. That is more important because without their support, uh, we cannot move on. And uh, then vendors, and we are all dependent on the government support. So, uh, government uh, will always support us and and moving forward, uh, as I said uh, before also, post FIFA, it's very important that many events are coming up, right lined up here, and uh, there's no shortage of the events. And uh, once, as, as Narsing said, that once a guest comes in and he experiences uh, a particular property, then I'm sure he will come and repeat in that particular property itself. Thank you. Mr. Anis, would you like to add something? Yes. Mm. <clears throat> the most important in the do list is their own property teamwork. Each person has to do their own area and this goes with, as a team. It's not only the procurement has to prepare mm. the list and pass on to others. Its important role is the whole team need to come up together and you you need to you are going to host a one big event and we need to make sure that you know our guests are happy and you know the the mega event goes very well mr rakesh you want to add yeah just one point i want to add that uh, we have planned strategically to uh, stock the consumable items in advance uh, on depends uh, on the basis of demands and the projection uh, to avoid the last moment uh, hassle. As you know, in the hospitality, every time uh, we have a last moment. So we have uh, streamlined the procurement process across the department, which establish the efficient spending as well, and which will support our operation to satisfy the 100% very well said, Mr. Rakesh. I do agree that all the procurement manager in the organization, we make, we prepare our to-do list. And it changes every minute. Based on the requirement from the user departments. Yesterday they need something, today they need something different. So it's very difficult for all of us to maintain the same list. So let's move on on the next question. As in the last couple of years, we have seen the toughest phase of our life. Because of COVID-19, not only the Qatar, the entire world has been suffered. I would like to know what are the three basic learnings we have taken from the last two years. And we want to take those learnings for the rest of our life. Mr. Anish Tau, please. Yes, during the COVID, that is most important is the 
virtual. Yes. That is, people were started meeting virtually. <laughs> Meetings are happening online. Everything, uh, as Mr. Filippo said, is traveling is become difficult to each and every everyone, and the procurement cycle is changed to online. So everything is online now. So the vendors also changing their way of you know. You know, showing their product online, and uh, that that is the learning process which we learn now during the COI. Any other points, please? I have I I must say that we have learned so many things yes. in the last uh, two so years. I want to add three points. First is time management. Yes. And the second thing is the administration said uh, work remotely by using the new technology which we we are not using before COVID. And the third and most important for procurement point of view, a strong vendorship relation. Yes. Because in during the COVID, everything was closed, especially entire the world. But I'm talking about the Qatar. But due to the strong vendorship relationship, we were. Uh, trying to fulfill the requirements of our operations. So these are the things I would like to carry for the long term, not to do with the code. I would also add that uh, uh, we, uh, as a procurement uh, personnel, we individually we used to interact with each other to know that some sort of about some vendors, mm -hmm. which uh, I'm not aware, but uh, there's some vendors who are there in the market in Qatar. So that, would, that was a very good help for us. For me, there was enough time for me, so I had been working on the variable cost factors. I found a lot of areas we can negotiate on, the more further negotiates on this time. So I did a big exercise on the variable cost factors, and it has given me a total effect of 4 to 5 percentage on the total variable costs. So it was a good exercise for me because I had enough time, so there was no major activities happening. Apart from that, uh, Mostly procurement managers, we would we won't do it. all in my career. I never had done working across with the forecast. We we had a spend analysis reports, which parallelly we were running across with the budgets. Sorry, the forecast. So it helped us a lot to I mean control the cost to the department. Fact. I mean, for example, if they are going on here, the variations will be able to control. And we did exactly the procurement on basis of that thing. Very, Mr. Nothing. We see when we face challenges like situations like pandemic and all these things, this is when we learn many things. And luckily, this time we had uh, technology for our support, which helped us do the virtual meetings, resolve things, and also the pandemic has taught us one good thing to get united. Like in the procurement side, all the procurement managers they got united where we are getting, what is the cost. So we could manage ourselves and also support the organizations with the low cost or in a better, uh, uh, I can say, in a very balanced way, with not affecting our uh, p &Ls and all those things. So, and also this pandemic has also taught us how to be self-reliance. So this is, these are the factors we learned from that, but also there are, maybe there will be many, uh, other situations coming in further in coming in years, but I still believe that as per the challenges, technology also supports us. So this is what I will learn from this thing. Thank you. From my end, what I learn is uh, reducing cost because everyone had a problem that all the budget has to do reforecasting due to the pandemic and we are the biggest people who can help to the bottom line. So we look for the lower cost things and where we can do the saving uh, to the bottom line to the department head. Thank you. Very well mentioned, all my colleagues. The What I feel, just my personal opinion, that we have missed it. One of the point, bullet point, that is how do you maintain your relations with our business partners, with the vendors? During the COVID, what I feel that yes, it was the toughest time we had, but the things got easy. 
when you have a fruitful relations with your vendors not only us they are also been suffered by this pandemic they also have a lack of manpower they also have a lack of uh, money anything but still they are always ready for us to support we must have payment issues we must have the supply issues we must have the delivery issues but yes they were also on their feet to serve us better second thing i would like to mention on this that uh, we should be means this covid they have taught us how to be proactive about the goals and the investment for the future we were not expecting this pandemic but when it comes suddenly yes there was opportunities for all of us to work in that manner when we have never worked in that so we need to be proactive like fifa is approaching we can be a proactive what are these things what are means what we need it how we need it how to get it all this preparation we can do it and this is only taught by the pandemic again one more thing which we must have uh, faced in the last couple of years limited stock in the market during this pandemic we all the hotels we don't keep much more par stock just to control our inventory but when it comes to the pandemic everyone was asking for the 100 boxes 2000 boxes for the mask this is really what happened and we were not expecting it so my learning from this last couple of years is we should be proactive we should keep a proper par stock of all those day to day operations which we might use in the next couple of months six months my i would like to move on for the next question which is like we always call our user department our internet customers we call the existing vendors or the new vendors are ex existing uh, what we call it external customers i would like to know what is your wish list from your internal customers and external customers to make your life easy mr ji no. if i take out the conceptions and i do standing orders because basically i don't have much bigger stores so i do sending orders all the time with the suppliers and then work, work according to that mm. and the user departments also helps me a lot for that thing actually because they only gives me the real actual stock so the department head supports us for that plus all the suppliers here are very proactive also right now because uh, they keeps us you know they also inform us this guy this item is going to x expect sorry they out of stock in next two months so you have to be prepared but there is most of the new hotels especially my hotel and a lot of other new hotels which is working on zero store effect you know there won't be a zero there is no store section it's all as direct conceptions so it's a big i mean opportunity for the suppliers also right now you know to stock items and act as their buffer store they are doing it some suppliers are doing it in qatar that's the main thing what i expect mr suresh uh what do you expect from your internal customers like the department head user department and uh, just to make your life easy as a procurement manager of this uh, of your hotel do we need any proper guidance or the specific or terms from your user department at the same we can forward it to our external customers Uh, for me, uh, for my user department, I expect them to uh, give me a forecast or a projection as to what are the uh, urgent items or important items which normally have to be imported. And based on their uh, projections, I can plan out as to how long will be the uh, the delivery period, and as well as. Uh, i can inform the user department this will be the state these are the status and these are the uh, uh, areas where we have to be very concerned of and keep keep the stocks so that 
you are not, uh, the operations will not hurt and the stocks will not exhaust. Mr. Narsingh, you want to add something? I strongly believe that uh, both internal and external customers have to be educated, fine-tuned, because the end user for us is our guest. So the guest requirements have to be always be fulfilled. Then you have to educate people, like uh, if there is a supplier, we need to maintain a good relation so that he can help us in last minute requirement also. And in the opposite side, when it comes to uh, our organization or our uh, end users, we need to educate them that they need to put amicable stock so that uh, they won't find such challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Narsing. In this, uh, I would like to add that all our user departments and all the uh, all the other departments, the our end users, they must be more specific about their requirements about their budget, time frame, so it will make our life easier, is it? Yes, it will make, but uh, also you have to understand that uh, there is there is uh, some different thought about me. Uh, what, uh, what I believe is uh, sometimes our uh, teams look into some different options, like they will may not give them what they require. They, will, they may say, I have this, but I want to see something new, something, because we have to give something wow factor to the guest. That is more important. So that is the reason when they come back saying that, can you find something else? So this is, this is what what for yeah. what we are. Yes, we are there for that. Mr. Kumar, actually we are the middleman. We get the request from the third party and we can convey to the supplier. And finally, we need to find the right product. What is my uh, end user? Uh, I have totally a different opinion on this. When we talk about 10 years back, this was happening. But now all these department heads are all well qualified. You know, like they are just like, they know better specifications than us. They are traveling all over the world. They know better products. They search for the products. From them, from, I had worked with the recently a housekeeper. So he has given me more ideas. Uh, I mean, how to help. Certain ideas we are starting. In last 26 years, I never got it. In procurement, so he was teaching me some concepts actually. So we are also developing from them too. Uh, at the same time, it's for me. It's, a, it's for me. It's not a challenge at all to uh, work it out. Actually, Mr. Anisha, would you like to add something? Please. I just refer to the uh, nursing. Okay, what he said is correct. You know, because end user, we need to educate them. You know what is the challenges in the international market or local market. This we need to address to them, and again, it depends on the department head and according to their forecast, according to their budget, how they want to move, and which is the you know A list, B list to be procured. It's everything is depend on the end user. Thank you. Thank you very much for your valuable opinions. As we all know that the global market is shrinking to our mobile, we can say each and everything, whatever you need it, it is available in your mobile and users can ask anything at any point of time. So my next question is related to how difficult you guys find to teach the user departments about the flow of procurement. Understood. Mr. Suresh, I think you... As, as, you, said, as you said that uh, everything is now uh, in all the mobile. So now, Core, for example, is coming up with all the mobile apps, which all the end users can see that what all items are there and uh, in, the, in, the, in their stores, or e-store, and they can order. That is not, uh, if it is not there, they can always request us and we can give them the options which is available in the market. Yes, this is what I would like to hear that yes, we are there to teach them, to educate them about the flow of, we cannot go whatever we can see on mobile, we cannot order it, we cannot get it. So this is how uh, 
difficult you guys find mr ajit you must have experienced these things for me last five years fresh in this table because of all my general clients are you know like well smart well smart guys you know they are performing very nice they are very knowledgeable and they you know they can even guide us actually they they have new products to me uh, that state is there actually so so i love that to work with that type of people mr sundar singh communication plays a very vital role our teams are well uh, well experienced they are professionals they know everything but when it come to end user there is always be emergencies and all this thing what i strongly feel is that you, you need to communicate clear to them what are the challenges what's happening in the market what is there what is not there and we need to educate them that there has to be lead times to be followed so that we can arrest such issues and there will not be any challenges further that's what i strongly believe agreed totally agreed on the same note we should be more patient we should be more persistent to show them how does it work how we will get the items instead of getting it directly from south africa or any other part of our country we must have a proper challenge channels to get the item easily within the time frame within the budget okay uh, just to sum up this discussion anyone would like to say anything else please i think we have been speaking so much uh, we should give some time to the uh, spectators to have some questions so that we can answer them and if they have any doubts that's it any questions please yes can i pass mm -hmm. um wait uh, my name is martin um some of you may know me already but you will see me anyway later on stage as well um i have actually two questions um one is related to sustainable procurement um most of you you are working with supreme committee supreme committee has actually put in a big question here of what product, uh, products you are purchasing and that as well sustainable during the world cup question number one and question number two is as well how do you see the current Uh, war in Ukraine, how it will have an impact on your procurement strategies and maybe as well prices which will go up for certain products. Thank you. Yes. Regarding the pricing structure of the current war situation, actually, if you see the market trends is going up. For example, if I take a common product, chicken, it's going up from eight eight dirhams to it has reached right now ten. It may go up in next two months to forty to fifty rupees per kilo. It's because the major thing is that contract from Ukraine are going to Brazil. Even Brazil, they take the contract from I um, mean Ukraine for the feeding the chicken. At the same time, Ukrainian chicken is fully stocked. So all the Africa started taking products from uh, Ukraine. Uh, sorry, Brazil. So Brazil is automatically increasing the prices. It's, they have so high demand on chicken. They just keeping demands on chicken. at the same time that they have been introducing like for example sadia brand like sadia is introducing lot rockers in between the middle east so they just buy in bulk quantities and keeping it out that is what exactly happening right now on the price structure that this same like the chicken prices it may go up right now the lamb prices is going up it's like all, all the prices are going up for if you do a calculation the prices has been taking up from last november it has gone up to around 12 to 13 percent we expect that in next july to reach 30 percent may go up to 30 percent so so what is your strategy to to mitigate that and, and to be prepared and again for the world cup i mean it's still so eight months to go right now and we have that kind of situation ongoing in the world that's a critical question actually for even even i am thinking what to do because I have a big shortage of call rooms. If I want to buy a store for World Cup timing, I have a big shortage of call rooms. So I cannot do that exercise. I have to depend upon local, like a GWC or some companies who can stock for me. But even though they will charge me, by the end of the day, the price of the chicken will be more than what I get. So it's 
So we have to run across, and what we do right now is what we are planning to do right now, for example, instead of buying boneless chickens and all at that time, we will right now buy boneless, I mean, right now keep, uh, buy the old chickens and bone it, deborn it. So this type of exercises, we can happen it in butcheries. So it's happening in the, in the butchery part. Then for the cut, we will use, start using cut vegetables, more on cut vegetables. Instead of using, by bringing all the juice, we'll start using cut vegetables. There are a lot of options, even the juices. Even the linen price, for uh, the freight cost. I was planning for my additional order of linen because I am depending upon a laundry, outsource laundry for doing my uh, laundry activities. So the laundry, even the Qatar, all the laundries will be fully occupied by this World Cup. I heard 32,000 pieces of t-shirts will be I, I mean, laundered every day. So all the big commercial laundries will be packed. So they won't be having time to give us. So all businesses is affected like this. So we have to, for Leland, we have to go for the five par actually. Right now we are running on three par. So we have to go for minimum five par to manage the series. In, sorry, uh, let me come. When it comes to the FIFA, one of the greatest event of the Qatar, to be very frank, with due respect for all my colleagues, we are not much bother about the prices. We are much bother about the availability. Because the market will be having the limited stocks and how we are working from now, how to procure those quantities which are quite required for our operations. Prices will be on the number two. What would be the prices? I, as you mentioned that yes, we always bother about the prices, but when it comes to the serving the guest, first priority is to get the quantities available in the market. As Mr. Ajit mentioned, what is the preparation? As we also discussed in our preparation, we are working on the tenders from now onwards for the next one year to get to secure the quantities what we are expecting in the next one year and it will be again depend on the business relation with our business partners anything else please next question mr uh, i would like to add one point to mr martin's uh, request to, regarding to the price if you observe post pandemic things are slowly moving and these things when few things keep moving it is step by step if you see in the past, the shipment cost has increased because there is a lot of movement. There is a lot of uh, uh, things moving around the globe. Earlier it was stuck in one place. So these things affecting the cost also because the demand, when the demand goes high, the cost will increase. But it is for some time only, I believe. And uh, I strongly believe that from August or September, these prices which have been increased may come down. I, I believe that poultry prices will come down, but it also depends on us how we negotiate with the suppliers because suppliers will always go for uh, when how they can take the surplus out from us. So that's the thing. So international market, we have to have an eye on the international market analysis or the we have to read about it, how things are moving. Like for example, like uh, Mr. Ajit said regarding the corn fed, corn cost, which is affecting the poultry cost and shipment, which is also affecting the poultry cost. These things are interconnected to each other. So this has to be observed and this will help us. I, I strongly believe this will come down. August, September, I believe this will be normal again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Any other questions? We question? miss out on a question from Martin, that sustainability thing, right? <coughs> I was talking about the sustainability. Yes, we are using more sustainable because nowadays so many suppliers brought to Doha uh, sustainable product uh, plus the garbage system going to be a more su sustainability uh, way uh, we are handling. We are coordinating with our collectors to work on with this, uh, the sustainability program. Yes, it is happening because there are a lot of products in Doha, uh, biograde, Packings and all these things. Thank you. And for Sir, me, please. One second. For me, we have uh, tied up with Andre and to use 
only the glass bottles during that time. From the month of September to December, we will use glass bottles only for them. That's the biggest thing that we can do on the bottle part. I cannot buy all the time the glass bottles, it's affecting the GOPs. So I will not do that. Three months we will do that. Question, please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maxine, Qatar Tourism. Uh, I do have a question and also a suggestion. I personally believe in sustainable shared value from the producer up until the end user. We all know the current situation in the world. There's inflation, prices are going up. There are challenges with logistics. Also, prices are going up. We have approximately 150 properties here in Qatar from uh, hotels to, sh to apartments. And if I may suggest and also ask you, because I see there's a great synergy here on stage, so thank you for this uh, panel. However, why don't you actually create an association and based on the association, a supply chain management association for hotels, then you would be able to negotiate the prices further. You'd be able to dictate and you would have a stronger presence as well in the market, whether it's local or global. And I take this example from Brazil, actually, there's an association that dictates the prices and dictates the logistics from some... We do have our procurement director sitting in our head offices because all of us, we belong to the different, different brands. We have to follow the brand guidelines. We have to follow the policies, which is from the corporate. In terms of anything coming from the uh, coming to the Qatar, it is practically not possible for all of us to prepare an association. You know, yes, please. Because local laws are always stronger than global. So I, I understand the global brand values guidelines, and yes, there are things to follow. But when you have an association, as well, you can drive your global brand and guidelines. So I may disagree slightly with you here. I think if you give it a try and with that strength and force, you would be able to drive also your organization towards change. And any organization would go for cost cutting, would go for uh, generating more value. Thanks for your suggestion. Yes, let us focus on the FIFA first and then we will focus on preparing an organization for sure. Yes, please. I just have one question, and um, in the context of the period of the FIFA World Cup, not necessarily on your day-to-day, -day, how much flexibility have you been given by the corporate brands to deviate from brand standard? Meaning, if I'm coming from Australia to watch a World Cup and I'm staying at the Lux property, and typically I ask for a Coke and say, sorry, we only have Pepsi. So my question is, in the context of service, you know, how much flexibility have you been given to deliver excellence, which is eventually is part of your destination image during this period of the FIFA World Cup? Can you deviate from brand standard? You. For me, for my brand, we can deviate because for me, Pepsi is a local brand. So not local brand means they produce locally. So I prefer to buy it from them. Even we deviated, even they stick on with Coca Cola, we said that we cannot do it because there's a big shortage. We are deviating. Certain brands won't be able to do that. Again, I must say that it totally depends on brand to brand. For us, what is the most priority is the guest satisfaction guest services if we are getting any of the local facility which is much better than our brand standard yes we should approach to the corporate procurement department corporate whomsoever it is related to deviate we have done this uh, couple of times in our hotel also in our properties also to get a deviation from the corporate and we get it done what is the most effective thing is the prices, the quality, services available locally. That's it. Thank you. Any other questions, please? Just to sum up this discussion, I would like to say that yes, this year we are going to have more challenges and more opportunities. And we are sure we will beat them with all of your support. 
FIFA is going to be a greatest event in the history of Qatar and for sure it will be a benchmark for all the future events around the world. Thank you.